The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome to another match day experience. Hopefully this game will go ahead as Rovers away to Sheffield United at Bramall Lane this evening. Just about to set off in daylight for an evening kickoff. Summer is nearly here, isn't it? But tough game for Rovers tonight away. In form, Sheffield United just the one defeat in 14 games. Unbeaten at home since October, albeit COVID affecting their home fixtures. You know, this is a confident Sheffield United side that we're coming up against tonight so we are going to have to be at our absolute defensive best I would suggest if we are to get a result tonight but boy a couple of important games coming up for Rovers isn't it with QPR at home following this fixture and if you're not subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button and please give this video a like for us. So yeah, hopefully the rest will do Rovers some good. Obviously the last game postponed due to the snow. Sheffield United though, uh, picking up a 4-0 win at home to Swansea. So, you know, what's the difference between us having a few days rest, them getting a confident performance at home to Swansea, I'd say. Uh, that's been evened out, us not playing the game. But Rovers getting bodies back slowly but surely. And the defence has a very settled feel to it tonight, doesn't it? Harry Pickering was named in the starting lineup for the Millwall game. Fully expect him to play tonight. Daryl Enahan was back on Saturday as well. He's back. So that back five plus the keeper, if we are going to go and get a result at Sheffield United tonight, absolutely vital that we've got that settled defence. So that's reasons for us to be optimistic. Big, big uh, negative for Rovers is obviously Ben Brereton Diaz out for a few weeks now. Not expecting to see him until at least after the international break. So other players in those attacking ranks are going to have to do their bit, aren't they? Sam Gallagher, Reda Kadra, Tyrese Dolan. These are players that need to step up. So hopefully we can nick a goal. Reda Kadra 1-0 away at Stoke. Something along those lines would be brilliant tonight. Maybe even Scott Wharton with a header for his first of the season in front of the away fans. Let's see. But um, it's a fixture tonight where it's hope more than expectation, really. We're going to have to perform really well to get the result tonight. So on the match preview, I did go with my heart rather than my head. My head says that we'll do very well to get a result. My heart says that Rovers will dig in and get a result tonight, but it's going to be bloody tough tonight. So, yeah, about to set off. So we'll see you soon. It's not only reasonable if you support a big team to the lower league team, but I can speak. Uh, okay. 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 The away end here at Bramall Lane. What it is to be ushered. in the away end and the team news is here the Rovers in yellow it's the same side that was announced at home to Millwall so Harry Pickering back at left wing back Daryl Enihan back in the side and Reda Kadra and Sam Gallagher up top so good to see that settled side same side that we named against Millwall the bench Ryan Hedges on the bench Tyree Stolen on the bench might need them to mix up those attacking options uh, in that second half but I'm expecting this to be a really vibrant atmosphere we'll just give you a little flavour of everything here the Ro Rovers players warming up there in yellow the atmosphere you can feel it already big game for Rovers let's see how we do about 20 minutes from kickoff now Rovers fans in full voice in that turnstile come on you blue we got a light show folks we've got a light show here we are look at this Should have done a warning about those. May not like the flashing lights. They're drumming up the atmosphere here. To be fair, it is pretty impressive. I've got to take another video of this light show because they are ramping it up now. Look at that, though. Worth your admission fee alone, this. Yeah, 
It's so good, I'm about to do three videos of this. Absolutely banging. First 10 minutes, long throws, causing terrifying chaos. Rovers not really in the Sheffield United half, so we knew it was going to be a game where we didn't have much possession, but one expecting that long throw. Kaminsky's uh, made a good save as well, but um, yeah, they can't go on like this, that's for sure. I said it couldn't go on, disallowed goal. Literally, I don't think Rovers have put a pass together yet. We are getting absolutely battered at the moment. Lucky escape, really loose, good save from Kaminsky. My word. <laughs> Chef United well on top here, well, well on top. Much better chance right across the goal there. The Rovers coming out much better. You hear the fans and full boys coming towards us in this net. Good start from Rovers. Blow for Rovers here, Joe Rothwell. It's gone in for a 50 50 with Sander Berger. He's come out on the wrong side of it. He looks like he's going off, but I think he wants to give himself a chance. He's come back on the pitch, but he is limping. He's looked good in there in this second half in particular. Hopefully, he can run it off. Shocking tackle from Charlie Good. Disgraceful. I want to see it on the replays, but my word, absolutely flew through Red Acatra. Disgusting tackle. Absolutely disgraceful. Rovers sensing it now. Come on! Penalty for Rovers. But within five minutes. Within five minutes. We're going down to ten men. They give away the pen, Chef United, it looks like. Red Acadra going to take it. My word, what a moment this is. What a moment.
job for Rovers for that penalty miss, which is a massive moment in this game. It rode that little storm at Sheffield United after five minutes. Obviously, their tails were up after this pen, but Ty Dolan on now for Ryan Yambi. Ten minutes to go in this. Missed opportunities at the moment. That missed penalty it was a poor penalty, really. Good height for Fodringham. Good save, really. Sheffield United nicked the game right of the death. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Big, big, big goal for them. Wow. What can you say? Kind of looked like we'd avoided that after we rode the little wave that they had for our Miss Penn, but wow. Football is cruel, isn't it? Still three minutes, you never know. But it looks like we're going to lose this one now. Back in from the game and wow, football is a cruel old sport, isn't it? Um, don't think anyone was prepared for how that panned out tonight. Um, I think there was a definite fear factor in the fan base tonight in terms of playing a very confident Sheffield United side. You know, we went there fully respecting them. And, um, you know, I was kind of hoping we would get a win, uh, maybe not expecting much or, or indeed a draw or, or just hoping that we wouldn't lose the game and... You know, all of our fears were, were kind of there in the first 10 minutes, weren't they? Sheffield United absolutely went for us in that first 10 minutes. We were looking shaky. We were rocked. Sheffield United were well on top. They must have had 80, 90% of the possession in that first 10 minute spell. And obviously the only thing they didn't do was score. And Billy Sharp had that free header and, and Thomas Kaminsky's made a couple of good saves. But... You know, fair play to Rovers. The way that we were winning that game tonight was to show some composure, to to show some resilience, um, to show some fight and to show some grit. And you got to say that we did that. We rode that spell in the first half and gradually we grew into that game. We dug in, we defended well, we stood firm uh, and then we started to impose ourselves in the game and started to make little chances of our own and, and little corners here and there. And, you know, we ended the, the first half pretty strongly. Um the second half, you know, really Rovers have not got what they deserve based on that second half performance. I thought we really did raise it in the second half. Um, I thought we came out really strongly. Um, again, we've not created a, a whole host of chances. You know, that really has been the pattern of play for all of the season, really. Um, even when we were scoring lots of goals, you know, we weren't having loads of chances in games. But, um, you know, it is a concern now that... Uh, that we aren't scoring. Um, you know, there's a stat that I've seen flashing around on Twitter tonight that, you know, we've gone from scoring the most goals or creating the most chances or having the most shots on target. I can't remember what the precise stats were to now being 24th and 23rd in those metrics. So we've gone from a side which is very much a top six side into a side that, you know, it's uh, it's kind of bottom of the table type stats. So, you know, the the lack of chances that we are creating, the lack of threat that we are uh, in an attacking sense, even when it feels like we're in a game and playing well, like we have done tonight in that second half, like we did away at Swansea, like we did away at West Brom, you know, that is a concern that we're not putting the ball in the back of the net. And I just wonder now if Tony Mowbray has reached the point where he might tweak that formation again, because I think my main observation on Rovers is... Early on in the season, we were very much going out to win games. You know, we were hurt in sides, we were pressing high, and the attacking unit was really strong. After the Fulham game, you know, it was very much not about losing games. And obviously, we had the clinical edge that went alongside that. With the way that the team is set up now, not to lose games, you know, yes, defensively, we look really tight. Yes, defensively, we look really strong. But is it enough for us to win those games of football? Is it enough to win games of football tonight, like where we needed it tonight, you know, is relying on a penalty the thing that we needed to do? So it is a little bit a, a bit of a concern that we're not creating those chances or, or having those big ones. But, you know, back to the game. Um, you know, the second half performance I thought was really good. 
Um, obviously, really helped out by the red card. You know, what a disgraceful tackle from Charlie Good. I mean, it made no sense why he's going in like that. Absolutely deserved red card. And um, I thought Rovers, you know, reacted really well to the, the 10 men. Um, I thought we struggled against Swansea to impose ourselves in a good way away when they went down to 10 men a few weeks ago. But I actually thought we looked pretty decent um, with Sheffield United down to 10 men, albeit not creating those chances again. But we looked fully in control. And eventually we got the golden opportunity, didn't we? It's great play from Reda Kadra uh, down that left-hand side. He's done really well tonight um, for the record. Uh, and obviously definite handball, definite penalty. Um, no complaints there. And uh, it's it's a poor penalty, isn't it? It's it's a good high for Wes Fodderingham. But I think the main disappointment for me is is why is Reda Kadra taking that? You know, I really salute the fact that he trusts his ability to put that penalty away. But for me, Sam Gallagher's got to have that all day long. He's the number nine. He's the striker who's got to step up in place of Ben Brereton. And I don't know why Gallagher hasn't taken it. So... Yeah, there was a little wobble after that, wasn't there? Five, ten minutes where the Sheffield United crowd were right back in it. But um, yeah, what happened in stoppage time? You know, what a, a, an utterly gutting way to lose that game of football. You know, Ben Davis, the guy who's come on, is a guy they brought on to shore it up and, and see it out. And he's the one who's ended up putting the ball in the back of the net. And it's really poor from Thomas Kaminsky, isn't it? You know, he saved us in that first half um, with the saves that he's made. But it was poor decision making from him there to try and claim that ball. He's obviously not on his line and then the ball's dropped for Ben Davies. He puts it in and, and that's the game won. So, you know, we've reached a real critical part of the season now, haven't we? I've done the instant reaction video. Um, and in that, you know, I, I made the point that this feels like, for a different reason, like that Fulham 7-0 defeat. You know, it feels like it's a moment in our season where we sink or swim. It's a moment in our season where Tony Mowbray can use how the players are feeling tonight and the experience of tonight to let the season go one of two ways. I hope that he can use this to motivate the players. I hope that he can use how they're feeling night, uh, tonight to really come out and, and hurt QPR on Saturday. And let's hope that this is a low point that we can just bounce back upon. But, you know, we now have sides right on our coattails and I would suggest this is the most pressure the side has been under for the whole season. We've had a nice gap for a number of weeks after getting ourselves into this position. That gap is no longer there. We're not a form side anymore. We can't rely on the talisman that is Ben Brereton Diaz. We can't rely on the amount of goals that we've been scoring. We are under pressure and we are under pressures from, from some sides who are in form. Sheffield United are in form. Luton are in form. Nottingham Forest are in form. Huddersfield and Coventry have been consistent in their results through the season. You know, they've not had blitzes of form, but they've just hung in there, haven't they? Middlesbrough are always a side that are always up there. And then QPR are dangerous, and obviously we've got them next. So we've got sides we're putting pressure on now. So this really is a sink or swim moment for the team. And I just want us to now not go into games trying not to lose them. Um, I think playoff sides, sides that make the top six, sides that get promoted, win away at Swansea, win the game tonight after going 1-0 down. You know, you beat your rivals in that sense. So, you know, it's it's huge now how this Rovers uh, team responds. And, you know, we forget that they are young lads. And I just hope that Mowbray's there to put his arm around them, you know, do what he needs to in terms of any dressing downs or, or telling off or, or whatever. But... This is now the time for Mowbray to really get this squad united and, and pick up from the disappointment of tonight. So, yeah, really good in how it's all panned out tonight. Um, I thought after the initial 10-minute spell that we rode our luck and, you know, we should have been 1-0 down. Actually, I thought we were full value for at least a draw. And actually, before the Sheffield United goal, I was stood there thinking, wow, I'm disappointed that we've not won the game. And I never would have thought that you know, the first 10 minutes into the game. So football is a funny old game, isn't it? And, um, you know, we've more than matched a promotion rival tonight. So they're the positives that we've got to take. Uh, in terms of performances, Reda Kadra is my standout man of the match, I think. I thought he was a constant threat down the left-hand side all game. Joe Rothwell in the centre of the park, I thought was pretty decent. Harry Pickering had a first, uh, a poor first half. I thought he really struggled and looked a yard off it, but he grew into the game at left back. And then all of the others, you know, you can't, again, fault their work rate. You can't fault their effort. You can't fault their grit. All these things, you know, they've stood up and been counted tonight. They've come to a hard place 
Um, you know, and they've nearly got the perfect result, but we're just not getting that rub of the green. We're not putting the ball in the back of the net. So that's why I just think that, you know, Mowbray just needs to look at the personnel. Ryan Hedges, Tyrese Dolan, Ryan Giles, you know, these are players that he could come in just to freshen up that attack. And Bradley Dack, obviously, longer term coming in. You know, let's get some options on the park uh, to really freshen the attack and, and hurt QPR on Saturday. But yeah, gutting. Uh, I'll end the video there. Um, you know, it was a pretty sad feeling driving back. It was a pretty sad feeling when that goal went in. But you know, now is the time, isn't it, for, for Rovers fans to get behind this team. You know, now is not the time to be chucking in our support. It's probably the time that as a fan all season, you know, after getting ourselves into the top six and doing really well and being convinced that we would make the top six, I think this is the first point in the season where actually there is a possibility that we might not. So that now needs addressing. Tony Mowbray needs to turn this around. Goals need to start being scored. Results need to turn around because we could quickly find ourselves outside of the top six if that doesn't change anytime soon. But what better way to do that than on Saturday against QPR at home, against a rival, we can get things looking rosy again and tee up that Fulham away game and then the three home games in a row really nicely. And those three home games in the row, um, you know, that's actually now turned into a pretty important part of the season, hasn't it? You know, we've got QPR at home first, then we've got the Fulham away, then those three home games in a row. So four out of the next five games at home, critical part of the season, isn't it? And I think 10 points minimum for me out of them. Um, if we can get three wins and a draw out of those four home games and get some bonus points away at Fulham, that's a good little return of points, which might just get us back on track. But to do that, you know, we've got to get goals. We've got to be looking more threatening as an attacking unit. And maybe Tony Mowbray's got to tweak it. So, yeah, I will end it there. It's disappointing. Let's not throw our support in the bin now. Let's get behind these lads. Let's get Ewood rocking on Saturday. The support at home to Middlesbrough was great. Something like that to get a victory at home to a playoff rival is just what the dots will order. So I hope you've enjoyed the match day experience. Um, you know, it was, it was a good stadium to go to. Just for the record, I've been to Bramall Lane twice now. I've seen four missed penalties, three in a Premier League game in 2006-07 season. Lucas Neal missing one at that end that Reda Kadra did, and then Rob Hulse and David Unsworth as well, and the Reda Kadra one tonight. So my record at Bramall Lane is laughable. Four missed penalties. Rovers obviously succumbing to a stoppage time winner as well so uh, not a happy hunting ground but i hope you've enjoyed this video we'll see you for the qpr match content at the weekend please give the video a like please subscribe to our channel and we will see you soon the rovers chat youtube channel is proudly sponsored by sixyardsout.com they've got retro football from every era with mugs phone cases and much more they also have plenty of rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94 95 season and this season's kit Check them out using the link in the description below.